And now, drop the dead donkey. This episode was first shown in a week when investigations into possible police corruption gathered momentum and the Western powers mobilised against Saddam Hussein. to get through today, please, so try and bear with me. Um, why don't we do something on this US stealth bomber? Apparently on radar, it looks just like a small seagull. When the Iraqis get suspicious when their radar spots seven seagulls flying in formation towards Baghdad <laughs> at 900 miles an hour. <laughs> right, now, I just want to do a very brief post-mortem on uh, yesterday's bulletin. Damien. Your item on mad cow disease. <laughs> yeah, look, it was not my fault that the pictures were so dull, George. And every cow in that herd had BSE. But could we get any of them to stagger around in a wobbly kind of way? <laughs> no. They just lay there doing bugger all and looking totally sane. <laughs> Even after we lobbed in the firecrackers. <laughs> you mean firecrackers? Well, you know, to get them up. No, no, no. <laughs> all right, now... Yes? Um, yeah, well, I'm in the middle of... Oh, all right, put on. I'm sorry about this, everybody. Yes, love? What is it? Yes. Well, the builders should know whether it's a load-bearing wall or not. No, put Gary on. Gary, look, is it a load-bearing wall or not? Actually, Gary, I don't think, well, there's only one way to find out. Constitutes a professional opinion, thank you. <laughs> no, 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 you get Norman to ring me. In the meantime, you don't touch any walls, any electrics, anything, all right? Where was I? Any questions? Hi, oh, yes. Um, Sally? Why is it that yet again this week I've ended up announcing so many depressing stories? Chemical weapons in the Gulf, massacres in Soweto. If this continues, people will start to associate me with gloom, depression... Nausea, disgust. She's right. I'm doing it already. <laughs> Please, Henry. I'm sorry, Sally, but I think you're just going to have to accept that at the moment the news tends towards the gloomy side. How are we going to cover this report coming out on Thursday about the chemical spillage in Scotland? Where it levels some pretty damning accusations at Chem Green, which is one of Sir Royston Merchants' companies. As an effect, are we? Mm. I mean, do we have a free hand on this one? Gus, you're Sir Royston's representative here. Please, as I've said before, I'm very much the new microchip in your mainframe. So, if you feel this is a big story, then of course you must go for it. Right, thanks, Gus. So, of course, I suppose that's the big question, really, <laughs> isn't it? Is this genuinely a big story? I sometimes wonder if we Brits are just a little bit parochial. When you look at the international situation, the violence in Kashmir, the killings in Liberia... I bet I get those. All I'm, <laughs> all I'm floating is, are we 101% sure this story is worth the coverage? Of That's course it. it is. Yes, I think it is, Gus. Fine. Well, George, you're the editor. I'm not here. Right. Uh, well, if that's everything, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Well done, George. You stick to your guns. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? So he fires you. Who cares? You'd still have your dignity. Keep it up. Listen, George, you have got to control these meetings. Well, George, I you have. This has just come through from the Press Association. Now, I'm warning you, George, if I get government statistics on cervical cancer, you'll be hearing from my agent, okay? <laughs> <laughs> George, George, have you had any more ideas on my thought for a live discussion program? Oh, Damien, look, we've been through this. Oh, look, come on, I'd be responsible and I'd concentrate on the major issues, you know, like uh, NATO, inflation, euthanasia. Yes, I can hear it now. Join us after the break where we'll be switching off Alice's life support machine. The answer is no. <laughs> George. Gus says, have yep. you got a moment for him to drop something into your toaster to see if it pops up? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> George! It's Gary. He says, is Brown live or neutral? Oh, Gary, look, I said you don't touch the electrics, all right? No. 
Just do the plastering in the bathroom, all right? I'm just going to say, Alex, that I am totally in control. Thank you. Sure. Come in, Gus. Ah, George, please, sit down. George, I just wanted to say one thing. I like you. <laughs> right, uh, thanks. I like what you do and the way that you do it. I like the way you're handling this chemical spillage number. You know, a lesser man might start to fall apart at the thought of criticizing the man who effectively owns the company. But not you, George. Oh, sorry, coffee? Oh, I forgot. How is the ulcer? <laughs> well, it's healing, you know. Good. And the eczema? Well, it's a nervous thing, really. You know, it sort of comes and goes. Does it? What rotten luck. <laughs> anyway, George, all I wanted to say was don't worry. I'm sure Sir Royston will understand. And he seems to have mastered that uncontrollable rage of his. You know, it's been weeks since he sacked anyone. <laughs> anyway, I know you've got lots to do. You're still sure it's a major news story? Yes. Fine. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. Those management consultants, Prince Lee, Smethurst and Smith, we roped in to assess our operations here, um, delivered their report. Have a skin, will you? Plug it into your mindset. Right. Um, see you. See you, George. Oh, uh, Dave, you haven't seen Damien, have you? No, why? Oh, he promised me some copies of his prostitution in Bangkok report. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? What, what are you doing? It was company dog's body. I've been given the riveting job of updating the obituaries so they're ready for when the relevant celeb pegs out. Oh. This is Edwina Curry's. <laughs> Rather enjoying this one. <laughs> Edwina Curry's no age at all. Why would she die? The publicity. <laughs> Things have been very quiet for her recently. Anyway, I hope she snuffs it soon. That's a terrible thing to say. I mean, you may disapprove of her politics, but... No, no, it's not yeah. politics. I've drawn her in the sweepstake. <laughs> <laughs> We're running a sweepstake on which of the obituaries gets broadcast next, and I've got Edwina Curry. The rules state that any cause of death is permissible, except assassinations, which don't count. Does George Dent know you're running this macabre lottery? No, of course not. I can't believe it. Running a sweepstake on when people will die, it's grotesque, it's obscene. 500 pounds in the pot. I'm in. <laughs> How much is the stake? 30 quid. There you are. All right. Now you shut your eyes and you pick out a name. Who have you got? Kylie Minogue. <laughs> What's she doing in there? She's only about 12, isn't she? <laughs> Kindly me no, I stand no chance. Oh, well, you never know. I suppose something might happen. Hey, I told you, assassinations don't count. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Henry Davenport. Kindly Minogue. Why couldn't I pick one of these old relics? Look, I mean, Lord Chalfont, Barbara Cartland, Lord Carrington, Roald Dahl, Henry Davenport, Lord Denning, Dame Elizabeth... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Henry. <laughs> Didn't realise that one was there. Sh shouldn't be there, really. Should be, um... Well, somewhere where you wouldn't have seen it. I'm... <laughs> Sorry. We, uh, we made it a few years back when you had that heart attack. So you all think I've got one foot in the grave uh, that I'm knocking at death's door? No, not at all. I'll have you know that there's an office full of women out there and in the last year I've shafted five of them. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your voice down. Look, these obituaries, they're nothing to do with age. They're... Uh, eulogies. They're, they're tributes. They, they show how much someone has achieved. Then what's Kylie Minogue doing there? <laughs> Eddie the Eagle Edwards? <laughs> Nicholas Parsons? Look, 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 look. These are two minutes long. Eddie Edwards is 20 seconds long, to be precise. Whereas yours, Henry, yours is one hour long. You see, it's a special program devoted entirely to your memory on account of your stature. My stature? Your stature, yes. <laughs> I mean, look. You don't see an obituary up here for Sally Smedley, do you? No. Exactly. Because she is a brainless ex-breakfast TV bimbo who has achieved bugger all. But you, Henry, <laughs> you are a national broadcasting institution. You're right, of course. Play it, will you? <laughs> what? Play my obituary. Oh, well, uh, well, I don't think I can, Henry. I mean, the people who contributed to this did so on the assumption that you'd never see it on account of your being dead. Look, look, Dave, Dave, I won't get upset. 
I just think it would be a very interesting metaphysical experience to see one's own obituary, that's all. You want to know what people say about you? I don't. Yes, you do. I do not. I couldn't care less. Oh. Good. Why, what do they say about me? <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing uncomplimentary. Well, why can't I see it? Because oh, I... Dave, why can't I see it? I'm sorry, Henry, but to show you this would be unhealthy and unethical. All I will tell you is that the programme Henry Davenport remembered is a moving televisual tribute to a respected broadcaster, beautifully structured and lovingly filmed. Really? Really. <laughs> and the car chase in the middle is brilliant. <laughs> Good evening. The main headlines tonight. President Bush has said he will not negotiate over the hostages. Saddam Hussein has warned of a bloodbath if Iraq is attacked. And George Dent has been sacked. <laughs> His replacement as editor at Globelink News will be Sir Royston Merchant's pet gerbil Disraeli, <laughs> who has promised not to run the Ken Green story. But first, home news from Sally. A house in Ealing collapsed today after workmen had removed every single load-bearing wall. <laughs> One of the workmen, called Gary, was revealed to be an escaped psychopath who goes around deliberately destroying people's homes. <laughs> George. George. Haven't you got a home to go to? I doubt it. <laughs> what time is it? Quarter to midnight. Oh. I fell asleep reading this. What is it? Oh, it's that report from Gussie's management consultants, Ponzi, smart ass and smug, whatever the bloody names are. Apparently, I'm deeply disorganised. Can you believe that? Deeply disorganised. I'm going to underline that bit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> He's clearly someone who is prone to bouts of stress. Oh, you are! this report is... Oh, forget this report. Relax. Why need you take some days off? <laughs> and who the hell had run this place? Oh, well, thanks a bunch. I mean, it's nice to know I have your complete confidence. Oh, Alex. Don't think I don't appreciate your support, because I do. I mean, the marvellous thing about you, Alex, is that at the end of the day, I know I can always rely on you to back me up. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> Henry Davenport was a remarkable broadcaster. Though he was not necessarily always an easy man to work with. In fact, his office nickname was Grumpy. <laughs> and sometimes he'd just explode, like a bomb. <laughs> but uh, we all loved him. <laughs> Five minutes till on air. Stand by BT2, BT1. Right, so then we'll do the West Midlands Serious Crime Squad investigation. Mm -hmm. How several important documents have gone missing. We'll probably claim the Birmingham Six stole them while they were beating themselves up. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you two, at the end we'll put BSE in. Uh, Damien's got some better pictures, cows stumbling around, foaming at the mouth, etc. But we're still 30 seconds over, so let's lose Princess Margaret's birthday party, OK? Oh, I thought that was nice. Do <laughs> you get that change, Henry? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Cooperate, will you, Henry? Oh, you know me, dear boy. I'm not necessarily an easy man to work with. Henry? <laughs> Henry? Yes, Henry, that is your name, isn't it? Oh, is it? I thought it was Grumpy. I thought I'd begin this evening's news. Good evening, this is the news read by Grumpy. <laughs> and Dopey! I've heard that! Yes, but did you understand it, Dopey? Pack it in, Henry. Careful, George, because sometimes I can explode. Like a bomb! <laughs> but it doesn't matter, because you all love me. All right. Who showed Henry his obituary? 
The so-called obituary contains 12 factual errors. How did he get to see it? I don't know. I locked it away. I said I want the obituary re-edited. I resent its carping tone. Perhaps we could deal with this later. Yes, here, here. We haven't time to discuss how vain old Pose's obituary. <laughs> they haven't made one for you. What do you mean? It wasn't worth it, apparently, because you're a brainless ex-breakfast TV bimbo that's achieved bugger all. Isn't that right, Dave? <laughs> Cheers, Henry. Uh, Eddie the Eagle Edwards has got one. <laughs> and Annika Rice. <laughs> but you haven't. Is this true? Look, we can talk about this later. Now, can we please get on? Yes. Yes, Gary. <laughs> What do you mean, where do I keep the fire extinguishers? <laughs> no, no, never mind being prepared. Look, I said don't touch the wiring. Just concentrate on the plastering in the bathroom, all right? Sorry about that. Now, uh, glancing forward to tomorrow's running order, I see that the report on the chemical spillage is being published. So I think that should go in at item 26. Item 26. So where would that go out in the final news bulletin? All about the fifth item. Unless it gets forced lower by bigger stories. We leave gaps in case that happens. Even the hugest story would only go in at number five. So the Chem Green story is at 26. At 30... 26? We'll have... You know, that does seem very high profile. And I wonder if it's more constructive to address these very valid green issues from a more global perspective. <laughs> well, I hear what you're saying, Gus, but I really don't think we can neglect this story. Well, of course we can't. It's important, significant, and we have got some great footage. You know, of dead fish floating down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Damien, Damien. I think we ought to run this story, Gus, and you did promise no interference. Well, absolutely. Point taken. I'm not here. Do I really not have my own obituary in the table? <laughs> I'm a national celebrity. I mean, what if something happened to me? I could step under a bus tomorrow. Would you? We'd be so grateful. <laughs> Shut up, I want an obituary, George. And I want my obituary right. re-edited. I do not want to hear the word obituary again today. Now, whilst we're on the subject of obituaries, it has come to my attention that Jeremy Beadle's tape is wearing extremely thin <laughs> because people keep playing it for fun. <laughs> so pack it in. Right, now this meeting is over. Alex, uh, Alex, you couldn't step into my den for a quick headbang, could you? Yeah, in a minute, yes. Uh, George, I've got another government statement here saying that uh, fears about declining educational standards are exaggerated. Spelt with three G's. <laughs> hey, you know that latest mad cow footage of Damien's? Yeah. The farmer's on the phone. He says he's just found out his cattle feed is full of fairy liquid. Do you want <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Alex, I like you. Really? And you know what I like most about you? Surprise me. Your loyalty. You're happy in that role of solid support module. And that's why I told those management consultants. I'm sorry? Well, their report recommends that you take over George's job and that George be moved into a less demanding role, something more eczema friendly. But I told them. <laughs> you can forget that game plan. Alex Pate's mental parameters extend no further than merely backing up George. Oh, do they now? And so it means we're still looking for someone to fill George's pivotal role. Someone who knows the terrain, someone who's organized, someone with the right suitability quotient. Does anyone come to mind? Possibly. Could you possibly elaborate on possibly? <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, Gus, that uh, I'm thinking of redrawing my mental parameters regarding suitability quotient for roles in pivotal terrain. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now, I just want to talk us through our coverage of the Notting Hill Carnival this weekend. OK, the police have provided the usual map. Now, at point A, they'll provide some jovial constables who'll be dancing with large, cuddly West Indian women. <laughs> okay. At point B, there'll be some more jovial constables who'll be letting young rasters try on their helmets. <laughs> And at point C, there's going to be some constables from the ethnic minorities. Now, get there early, because they're going to be moving them around so it looks like there's more of them. 
OK, now uh, the riot. The riot we expect to take place at the usual place around about 8 o'clock on Monday, OK? We've got the usual flat with a good view of the crossroads. You pick up the key from Mrs Sullivan, number 85, as per last year, OK? OK, then. Damien, what on earth have you got there? Oh, this is next door's cat. Yeah, I'm just looking after it for them. You want to be careful. Cats can get BSE, you know. I know. <laughs> Fingers, Gus, it's a point of principle. And I said in front of everyone that Henry couldn't re-edit his obituary. Now, I can't go back on that. Well, absolutely. It would be wrong for you to change your decision. That's why I changed it. What? I felt we had a serious dialogue short haul on our hands, so I resolved the situation to ease your enormous workload. Well, how is the eczema, by the way? It's fine. Everything's fine. My workload's fine. I'm fine. Fine. But you see, you've still overturned my... The point is, Gus, I thought that you said that I was in charge. George, believe me. You're as in charge as you ever were. <laughs> um, so... Did anyone see that sex talk program on Channel 4 last night? Sex is becoming like the bloody World Cup. Sod all action, followed by hours of post-match analysis. <laughs> Everyone banging on about the female orgasm. Before feminists were invented, women used to lie back and be grateful. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, whenever a woman comes back to my place, the earth moves. From what I've heard, you'd be extremely lucky if any part of your anatomy moved. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, I want to do a follow-up on BSE, but no pictures this time, thank you, Damien. No foaming cows. No cats that have been dosed up with benelin. <laughs> so, BSE's at 31. The Chem Green spillage story stays at 26. Yes, George, I was wondering about the um, Chem Green thing. Is this story really worth carrying? You've changed your tune. One should keep an open mind. Yes. How is the obituary coming along, Henry? It's editing together nicely, thank you. So is mine. It seemed only fair to be even-handed. I think that perhaps Henry does have a point about this Ken Green story. Hang on. How have you been nobbled? No, no, don't tell me. The live discussion programme. It's only a tryout, George, to see if Damien's baby has legs. I think you've walked into an ambush, George. Does anyone else feel the Chem Green story's not worth running? Well, I've got my doubts about it. Well, stop me, there's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> we are running this story because it is significant, isn't that right, Alex? Well... <laughs> well, what? Well, there are a lot of stories surfacing just now which might squeeze it out. Right. Well, in the light of all your misgivings about it, I have decided that the Chem Green story stays. Because someone has to ensure that we select the news on the basis of the public's right to know, rather than our own self-interest. And if running this story and showing integrity and independence means that I get the sack from Sir Royston Merchant, then so be it. George, that was magnificent. I was proud of you, very proud. Well, it needed said. Absolutely. Sod Sir Ashton. We don't care. The Chem Green story stays. It certainly does. So where do you want it in the running order? 99. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. Here you go. Last item. Probably get squeezed out by a late story. I'll just go and check for late stories. <laughs> Thanks for those tapes, Damien. Well, cheers, Henry. <clears throat> Henry shouldn't watch that prostitution in Bangkok stuff, not with his heart. Oh, where's the heart? You're only saying that because you've got Henry in the sweepstake. <laughs> what sweepstake? Ah, I see you've moved it to 99. It takes a strong man to change his mind, George. <laughs> yes? Oh, hello, Gary. Yeah. Have you finished replastering the bathroom? Uh, John. Yeah, OK. Fair enough. So, at least you got your bathroom finished, huh? No, they didn't get time to finish it today. Took them all afternoon to knock down the conservatory, apparently. Which is fair enough, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask them to knock down the conservatory. <laughs> mm. 
What's the latest on King Hussein's peace mission? Pointless. The Americans won't accept anything less than the restoration of the democratic government in Kuwait. What democratic government in Kuwait? Well, it's a reasonably democratic system, you know. One shake, one vote. Hello. Talex from our Westminster correspondent. He reckons it looks like the MPs are definitely about to be recalled. Why does he say that? They've just delivered 60 cases of Johnny Walker to the House of Commons bar.